ChatGPT and other LLMs will always hallucinate. Siwei Su and colleagues have proven that in the following research paper. And it's quite mathematical. But don't worry, I'll try to spare you most of it and just talk about the approach, findings and implications. So let's get into it. The paper starts with introducing the issues of LLMs on page 1. One of the critical challenges they face is the problem of hallucination, where the model generates plausible but factually incorrect or nonsensical information. Then we go into a few definitions to be able to calculate with them and mathematically prove something. So let's go briefly through them. Alphabet, a finite set of tokens. String, sequence of tokens. An LLM is a probabilistic model of a string that conditions the output at time t based on all the tokens that come before it in the string. So very simple, an alphabet is basically a, b, 1, 2, plus, minus. This would be an alphabet. Alphabets that LLMs use consist of all the letters, all the numbers and a lot of extra symbols. A string is basically just a sequence out of this alphabet and an LLM is a model that completes a given string with whatever it has in its given alphabet. So for that your prompt or the user's prompt is basically the beginning of the string and the LLM completes that string based on the most likely character to come next. It's important to note that such completion occurs iteratively, one token at a time. Iteration stops after a fixed number of iterations. That's important to keep in mind for everything else the paper continues talking about. The paper now also defines p-proofed LLM. And I'll not go too in-depth into that, but we'll have to talk about it a little bit. The algorithm p basically defines LLMs mathematically so that we can use and continue calculating with them. It's based on LLMs being computable. This just means they always produce an output for a given input, which they do. And LLMs complete their computation in polynomial time. This basically just means if the input they get gets longer, it also takes longer for them to produce an output, but they will produce an output eventually. If you are confused, that's okay, you can forget about it now. It's just important to define that so that the paper has something mathematical that it can continue calculating with to actually prove something. Let's move on to further definitions to understand the approach. Definition 4. The formal world of F. So it's a formal world of ground truth function F is a set of G also a function that completes a prompt to produce a factual statement. We only assume that set T is a generalized corpus of how ground truth F. Okay, fuck that. Let's break it down very easy to understand with an easy example. So we are basically defining here T, F, and hallucinations. T is a fact, basically, a ground truth. So that could, for example, be Dov equals flying animal. That's a ground truth T. Now, if you ask an LLM, if you ask, hey, ChatGPT, please give me a list of three flying animals. And ChatGPT gives you Dove, Hawk, and Duck. This is basically F, a ground truth function. Now, there are more possible ground truth functions to the question that we just gave. For example, ChatGPT Chat could say Dove, Hawk, Eagle, and we have a different ground truth function. So the ground truth function f uh, consists out of ground truth t. If ChatGPT would now say dove, hog, duck, and let's say cat, this would not be aligned with any possible ground truth function. Uh, it differs from ground truth, so by definition this is now a hallucination. 
And that's basically all what we just defined. The paper goes on to define a formal learning procedure to combine all the possible fixes for hallucinations in the real world. Like initialization of parameters, selection of optimizers, learning rates, objective functions, stopping criteria, inference hyperparameters. If you want to see the function in depth, check out the link in the description. But for you, it's just important to understand that LLMs trained by the procedure in definition 8 are far more powerful and flexible than their counterparts in the real world. Therefore, if hallucination is inevitable for our LLMs in the relatively simple formal world, then hallucination is inevitable for LLMs in the more complicated real world. I think that's self-explanatory, but just briefly, the mathematical defined LLMs are way more powerful and robust than the LLMs like ChatGPT that we use in the real world. Therefore, if we can prove that these mathematical LLMs will always hallucinate, LLMs in the real world will for sure also always hallucinate. Great, now the paper goes into the proof on page 8. And to be honest, this is a little bit over my head, but here it is for you to look through if you want. So simplified, there's practically an infinite number of ground truths. So these ones, T duff equals flying animal, and there's practically an infinite number of these ground truths that are possible. This infinite number makes it virtually impossible for LLMs to have the right answer for everything. They have a very large data set, but they can't possibly define every possible ground truth. So let's say you ask the question, hey, give me three flying animals again. And now the LLM says, dove, hug, and dragon. Now, maybe in a training data, it was spoken about the dragon like it's a real animal, like it exists in the real world. And there's no defined ground truth that dragons are fictional and don't actually exist. This is, of course, just a simple example. But since it's virtually impossible to define all ground truths, every LLM will hallucinate at one point. Now, this is not fully in tune with the mathematical calculations, but again, if you want to have a look at them, be my guest. The paper goes on to further talk about how LLMs produce output not only in finite time, but also in polynomial time. The issue is that if a question is very complex and the LLM can't answer it in time, LLMs will inevitably hallucinate because they have to come to an end at one point. So the paper concludes, hallucination of LLMs cannot be eliminated either our formal world or in the real world. This answer is independent of one, LLM's architecture and complexity, two, procedure used to train the LLM, three, the prompts and questions, four, the number of training samples, and five, inference hyperparameters. The paper moves on to give LLMs a theoretically simple yet time-consuming task to show how every LLM will hallucinate eventually. In this task, an LLM is required to list all the strings with the length m using an alphabet A. And I'll show you what that means, because it's very simple and you can test it yourself by just copying and pasting the prompt, or making your own prompt if you want to. So you basically just take a certain number of letters, let's say a and B, you could also use C, and then you tell the LLM to list all possible strings for a number length of, let's say, 4. So that would be, for example, A, 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 B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, a, and so forth. I think you get the idea. And these numbers, these lengths, these strings get longer and longer, and the longer they get, the more time it consumes, and at one point the LLM will have issues and start hallucinating. 
Remember what we said before, the LLM has to add one token at a time and has to be finished within a certain period of time. Here you can see the tables of the tested strings and LLMs and at what length they started to hallucinate. Alright, now the paper goes on to show multiple ways that are used to minimize the effects of hallucination and their weaknesses. Larger models and more training data. So you just make the LLM bigger. And yes, increasing training data will result in diminishing generalization errors if training time is sufficient. But it will not eliminate hallucination with respect to an exponential time ground truth function, no matter how many layers are added or how much additional training data are provided. So what that means is if time gets too long and the LLM has to come to an end, it will still hallucinate. Next, the paper talks about prompting LLMs with chain of thoughts, reflections, verifications. And prompting is effective in mitigating hallucination by guiding them towards solutions more preferred by humans, which are possibly the ones with lower complexities and within LLMs capabilities. But it is impossible to eliminate hallucination for all tasks by simply changing the prompts and hope LLMs can automatically prevent itself from hallucinating. I think this one is pretty self-explanatory. So let's go to Ensemble of LLMs. So you can use more than one LLM to correct the other ones, which could be more capable and less hallucination prone than individual LLMs. However, an ensemble is essentially a single LLM viewed under definition 2 which means it's bounded by theorem 3 and cannot eliminate hallucination. If you want to have a look at definition 2 and theorem 3, feel free to do so. I'll move on to the next approach. Guardrails and fences. The guardrails are principles that align LLM's output with human values, ethics and legal requirements. The fences is a list of critical tasks that should never be fully automized using LLMs. And this is potentially a useful hallucination mitigator for the formal world and some real world problems. However, its scalability in the real world remains an open problem. And not just its scalability. In my opinion, if we define tasks that cannot be done by LLMs, we did not eliminate hallucination, but we just circumvented it, right? Moving on to the next approach, which is LLMs enhanced by knowledge. Popular chatbots driven by LLMs such as ChatGPT has started utilizing tools such as search engine, code interpreter and calculators to solve complex problems beyond their innate capabilities. This is potentially an effective mitigator of hallucination in the formal world. However, whether it works scalably in real-world tasks is an open problem. All right, now that we have looked at the approaches to minimize hallucination in the real world, the paper moves on to talk about the implications of its findings, which are all LLMs will hallucinate. Without guardrails and fences, LLMs cannot be used for critical decision making. Without human control, LLMs cannot be used automatically in any safety critical decision making. Research on LLM safety boundaries is crucial in ensuring sustainable development of LLMs. Which all makes sense. If the first one is true, which it is, all the others follow as a logical consequence. After having discussed that, the paper talks a little bit about the positive side of LLMs and hallucination. As the paper states on page 14, also we have shown that LLMs will inevitably hallucinate this does not undermine their tremendous value in enhancing productivity. Moreover, hallucination itself should not be viewed entirely negatively. In scenarios where speed and volume of information processing are overwhelming, the occasional inaccuracies of LLMs are acceptable compromises. The key is not to view LLMs as infallible sources of truth, but as powerful assistive tools for informational retrieval, analysis, summarization and presentation. And in art, literature and design, the unintentional and unpredictable outputs from LLMs could inspire human creators. 
So yes, in certain creative areas, hallucination could actually be positive and it might be even worth it to enhance it a little bit. Of course, only knowingly that the LLM will likely hallucinate. But generally, when it comes to the application of LLMs, the paper states that we emphasize that since hallucination is inevitable, rigorous study of the safety of LLMs is critical. And these findings align well with a 90-page paper published by Ben Goertzel, which looks at why LLMs will never be AGIs. Hallucination is also a very, very big problem here. And I've dissected the whole paper in the video right over there.